the studio or any garbage like that. We just made our own. So, anyway, to celebrate, we're beginning a entirely new series. Quite irrational, but today we'll be doing the first episode of Chemistry, where we'll talk about energy levels. I know we missed out on atoms in the periodic table. We'll talk about them later. So, this is the periodic table. So, I bet even I can name a few elements. Okay, okay. Stop, stop, stop. I can't deliver the lesson if you do that. So, um, here's a periodic table of elements, and you may be surprised to see that I remember some of them after, like, I don't know, six years. So, uh, let's point some of them out. So, of course, this is hydrogen, the first element, helium. Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, uh, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon. Oh, God, I'm really getting sidetracked, aren't I? The nostalgia takes you on a real trip. But anyway, they're basically named for their, their atomic number, which is based on the structure of their atom. Now, typically, to represent an atom, we use the Bohr model, which basically says there's a nucleus over here, a bunch of empty space, and then an electron somewhere in this area. And so, this is what an uh, atom typically will look like. And so the atomic number is based off of that. So for example, if you have a whole bunch of particles over here, if you have a whole bunch of protons and neutrons over here, that's probably going to go in your unon octavia or the unchemist the unchemistry sounding organesson on your hands. Organesson on sounds like the name of some of crafted monster. Not like a chemistry element, but anyway, if you have, just say, a single proton, for example, though, you will have, uh, you will have hydrogen. Now, hydrogen is a bit unusual in the case that it's the only, the only actual natural element where the protons outnumber the neutrons. Because protons, one, uh, neutrons, zero. Well, uh, and there are ions. But, I mean, those aren't included on the periodic table, are they now? So, this gives us, this leads us to, um, let's see, our energy level. Now, what are our energy levels? So let's just imagine the nucleus is this big blob right here, because we will be focusing on that crap. So anyway, we have the electron right over here, a little dot. Now, to your surprise, there is more than one orbital. Now, an orbital can be marked with an S, a P, a D, or an F. These all depend on the type of orbital or the shape of the orbit. And so, the thing is, let's call this orbital 1. Now, the amount of electrons that can fit on each level is equal to 2 times whatever number the orbital is. Oh, and the SPDF stuff, that's a subset. And so, 2n squared. And so, for orbital 1, it's understandably going to be 2. For um, orbital number 2, that number becomes 8. For orbital 3, that becomes 18. And so on and so on. And so... It's kind of, they're kind of like motel or hotel. They get bigger and bigger and bigger as you go down the road. So the first hotel can only fit two electrons. 
The second had more capacity. So it's vacant until eight electrons have filled it. Five, six, seven, eight. The third, ele uh, the third electron space gets bigger and so on and so on and so on and you know the deal. So, now, these are our cells. And an electron can jump from one cell, uh, these are our orbitals. And an electron can jump from one orbital to another if given enough energy. Like say, energy by a passing photon. And so, if an electron is given energy, then it will most likely jump to the next level because it has that energy. But then it gets sad and it releases all that energy. And so that energy goes away, sometimes in the form of a photon as well, and the electron goes back down one level. Kind of like stairs as well, aren't they? So, these are our cells and our orbitals, and these are our energy levels in particular. So, in our energy levels, just like motels, you can't be in between one and another at the same time. You have to be on one or the other. Or it could also kind of be like stairs. I mean, there were a lot of analogies here, aren't there? So, let's just draw it one more time. So, for example, the things or the electrons, they are on the outermost cell. These electrons, naughty electrons, are called valence electrons. Electrons that are the farthest away from the nucleus. I should probably illustrate the nucleus right over here. And so the thing is, the more valence electrons a little atom has, the more stable it becomes. And so these energy levels, there's a top energy level, smaller energy level, a smaller energy level, till eventually you get the closest you can to the nucleus. So remember, as you go up, your energy increases. If you go down, you let off energy. And, oh no, that space doesn't happen. And remember, you cannot be in between orbitals. And so, this is what energy levels are. So, to give a quick sonic speed summary before we end the lesson, we have an atom over here, don't we? Now, an atom is what makes up um, the baryonic matter that we know of. For, uh, like, for example, my hand, the phones that are recording this, the device that you're watching this on, the, the very science lab studio I'm in, the air around me, all of that is matter, baryonic matter. And so, we know it to be made of atoms. And so, these atoms often have multiple energy levels. As you get farther and farther away from the nucleus, the energy you have increases. So for example, and when an electron jumps from one level to another, it's excited. But then, when it goes down, it becomes sad again. And it releases off a little bit of the, of the energy it has. Most of the time coming in the form of photons or light. And so, these, uh, you can jump from one energy level to another, just like that. And... When you're at the when you're a valence electron, you're on the outermost energy level for your atom. And sometimes valence electrons can be naughty people, and they can jump away. Or sometimes you will especially see this in biochemistry. They these electrons can share. Sharing is caring, isn't it? And so 
like these electrons can also hitchhike onto another atom. So, now these valence electrons are also the, not only the most, the, the thing that stabilizes this atom, but also the most likely to hop away because it's naughty. It's a naughty boy. And so, that is a summary of energy levels. Thank you everybody for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time at Dairy Science Lab Studio. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. The Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.